Okay, so we're very lucky. Very, very, thanks for being with us today, Saul. Soon is your 100th birthday on the uh, February the 11th, and we've mm -hmm. known each other a long time. And yeah. it's been a great friendship with your my, my late father-in-law. I know you're both survivors, and we have lots of stories to tell, but all the stories that I know are all the time since I married my wife, Elaine because she told me all about the friendship that you had with my father-in-law and all your buddies before you got married. So today we're going to talk a little bit about life and about the lessons of how to live a happy life. Show some of the videos. Look at Saul. He's an active guy. These are recent videos of Saul oh. dancing, walking, having a good Show time. Show me dancing. And it oh. shows us all <laughs> what life's about. And that we got to enjoy at every so. age. So I'll still go to work. Say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's always positive. And we're very, very lucky to go have Zadie. you here today. Uh, uh, go Zadie. Uh, uh, go Zadie. Uh, uh, go with how you move. Woo, woo. All right. There you go. Natalie with Zadie. I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So, so a very happy birthday. So my, my first question, Saul, how do you know, how did you know my father-in-law, Eddie Agadinsky? Now, every Friday night, we used to meet, the library used to be on Esplanade, the Jewish library. Now, every Friday night, we had a speaker from the so-called the, the, the Bund. And we used to get to get, get together every Friday night. We, we used to meet there. Where where did you grow up? Where I grew up? Yeah. In, in Poland Lodge. Okay. And what was your childhood like when you were a child? What was it like? It was a normal childhood. We used we went to Heide, we used we went to school. And then we had a lot of friends. Tell me, tell me about your grandparents or parents. What what were your grandparents like? We were living in Lodge, but my grandparents were living in a small town, uh, quite a bit away. We, they used to come into Lodge to see the, the children, the grandchildren. I have a story that is interesting about Mr. Peter K. Yes. When my when when my um, when my well, when my when Peter K was visiting his sister in Montreal, it was our engagement yeah. party. So his, yeah. his sister said, "Bring him, bring him to the engagement party." He started talking to my father-in-law, and when he told his story, he told my father-in-law, "It's very similar to somebody that I know in Melbourne by the name of David Landau." And in fact, David Landau saved my father-in-law's life. So. I, Elaine told me, my wife Elaine told me, you also knew Peter K. I was taken with Peter K. the first Jewish transport from entire Europe in 1940 to Germany. And I was on the same train in, and we were 868, all the same age, 18, 19, 20. Now, out of the 600, of the 868, survived only myself and Peter. Don't forget that this was 1940 till 45, five years in nine different camps. And I lost, I, lo I lost Peter K for another camp. Then I met him again in Auschwitz again. And then I met him after the war in Lodge. And we are the only two, but he passed away six years ago. He passed away, it's going to be seven years. Uh, you remember when my wife passed away? It's going to be seven years uh, in, uh, in June now. We were the only two survivors from the 868. Wow. Because Peter... Uh, it, it is the case that I went to, to Australia, that since the, this was in July, it's summer, summer times, and he had a request that if it's possible that his daughter is making a bar mitzvah in December, it would be his biggest joy in his life that the only two which survived the Holocaust should beat us simple together. So wow. I went there to the bar mitzvah. Nice. We, were, we were very close because uh, 
there cannot be a, a closer relation than me and him that the only two survived from the entire transport. Right. Well, it was Peter Kay who told my father-in-law that the man who helped him survive the war was living also in Melbourne, David Landau, because my father-in-law lived in the ruins of the ghetto in Warsaw. And this man, David Landau, was found him, he said 90% dead and brought him back to the bunker. And Peter Kay put them back together again at our engagement party. And then we went and we met David Landau in Poland for the 45th anniversary of the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto. Anyway, no, I, 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 I didn't know about Landau. Right. It's a small world. Yeah. Oh, 50th anniversary, right? 50th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto. Okay. Um, so if you would think, now we have the internet, right? We have the internet. Yeah. We have an uh, interview like this. You could find people easier today. If you say in your lifetime, what was the best invention? What was the, the, the greatest advancement uh, in your lifetime? What would it be? Well, I did the internet. <laughs> the internet. The internet. Listen, um, we're going to show some pictures that uh, Natalie sent us some pictures. And I'd like you to tell me a little bit about the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. This is a picture. In, in on the you see the, the I'm the, the shorter one. My friend is the bigger one. <laughs> this was taken a lot maybe in 1935. Now, how did I get this picture? A friend of mine they immigrated to to Buenos Aires in the 1930s, and after the war, I remembered his address and name in the city, and I wrote a letter, and the letter got to him. And he, he had the picture and he sent me this picture. Otherwise, I would never have had it because he had it from before the war. Hmm. Yeah, this is Peter. This is Peter with me and Lodge after the war. Oh, Peter Kay. Wonderful. Yeah, he was at my engagement party. Nice. Yeah, this is right after the war. You look good. Right after the war. And, and if you notice, uh, we didn't have clothes. I'm still wearing... Uh, um, uh, uh, a German shirt. Oh, this is here. This is here in Montreal. Oh yeah, this is this is uh, my late wife and uh, and the two children, uh, uh, Lydia. I think no, Lydia. Right. Uh, no, yeah. and my son Irvin. Yeah, this is this is uh, my, my late oh, wife. Nice yeah, with Diane. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, tell us about a day in your life now. I know uh, you're still very active. So what do you what, what do you do during the day? What do you do? I still work. Tell us about that. What business? Hey. What business are you in? What's your business? I am in the sewing machines. Okay. So yeah. you were on Saint. You were near where my father-in-law made dresses. Eddie made dresses. Yes, yes, because you see, we established this factory for Feynman. Now Feynman joined his brother to the uh, to the ballet shoes, and there was a question that it was Eddie or Izzy Atlas. So he asked me that what he should do. I says, "What what are you going to do with Izzy Atlas? He is not a tailor." But Eddie, if he takes over the factory, he could he could keep it going. So what we, we installed in the factory, and we got him a little the, the, the connection with the with the manufacturers to give him work because they were contracting, they were not manufacturing. So this is the way that the, Eddie was very close with me and, and, and with Henry. Exactly. So did you go to the, see the plays? The the you go to the theater when your when your grandchildren were in the plays. You know all the theater we did. Did you come see the shows? The show, show. I've seen all the plays when she was there, but because Riva was part of the play. Exactly, she's doing well. She always was great singer, dancer, actress. It was fun. So um, so what do you do in your spare time when you're not at work? What do you do? Do you like to read, exercise? I read. I read a lot of books in the, the papers. I never miss the papers. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, there's a, there's, in the papers now, we always hear the same stuff. 
what what are you, so your hobbies? What were your hobbies in life? <laughs> you know what? Way back, I was working 27 hours a day. No, Irvin asked me a question. How is it possible? I says, you're not smart enough to figure out. We work so fast to create extra three hours. <laughs> That's funny. No time for hobbies. It work. work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I travel. I traveled a lot. Well, that's fun. I traveled a lot. I told you, I keep trying. I don't count. Don't count. I just keep going. So that's, that's the way to do it. You can be 25 still then. Yes. That's the way. I like. I it. like your roommates all. You're doing very well. You have a good roommate. Am I a good roommate? <laughs> Am I a good roommate? <laughs> that's a good girl. Today is a very important day. Yeah. I was today shot on a train from Buchenwald to the last camp, the 9th of February, 1945. And the, the one from, I was, we were 1,200 people on this train to the last camp, Zwieberg. And we were slight from the Americans or the English. So, his name was Moshevitsky, and he was from, from Belgium. From, uh, uh, and he threw himself on the floor. I didn't have on the hood to hide, and I covered his body. A bullet went through my legs and went into his stomach and killed him. Now, is, th is this not luck? This is not the first episode. Or if you will see my... my Testimony, you will see it. So, so tell me, like, if you want to be remembered for something, what, what is it? How, what, what's your philosophy of life? What's the philosophy of life? What, the philosophy of life is to make everything possible. I mean, it, the easiest way to make it possible. And keep going. I said, you know, my philosophy is tomorrow will be a better day. So uh, that was that was great. You know, uh, I really appreciate that you came and you spent the time with me today. And I want to wish you good health. Enjoy Thank you. And the very best. And the very best to you. And I wish you, you, you just said good luck. This is the most important thing, luck. Exactly. If you will see my tape, my uh, testimony, you will see that luck is the most important thing in the world. Nothing, you cannot say I was strong. I was smelt, I was anything. It, no, no, nothing had any value, only the luck saved, saved you. Well, well, let's hope you continue to have good luck and good health. We all wish everybody should have good health, good luck, and to enjoy every moment of life the best that you can. All right, here you go. Happy 100th yeah. birthday. This is a certificate we're going to be sending to your house in honor of your 100th birthday and wishing you your continued <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. You know what, I Mitchell, I don't count. I just keep going. Excellent. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> All right. Take care. <laughs>